So here's what we're going to cover today. First of all, I want to make sure that you understand what Bullhorn standard hiring workflow looks like. And then from there, we'll learn how to configure custom workflow icons. And then thirdly, we'll look at how do we troubleshoot those workflow icons. Now, what we're looking at on the screen right now, this is what's considered to be the Bullhorn standard workflow. As I run through these different steps of the workflow, I do just want to mention that when you're in Bullhorn and you're looking at your workflow, there is a possibility that you have slightly different labels than what you see as our standard workflow. But let's let's focus on what does each of these steps, what do they represent? Starting with the pre-screen. A pre-screen is an opportunity for me to speak to a candidate. It's someone who I have not necessarily had any engagement with before, and it allows me the chance to understand who they are, what are their skills and their experiences to determine are they a good fit for the type of jobs that I have available. To document a pre-screen, it's simply adding a note. Next, you'll see internal submission. I also see this a lot. Instead of it saying internal submission, your label might say submission only. The key word, though, is internal submission. A, an internal submission, it's very much an internal step. This is a way to be able to identify a candidate for a particular job. I might have a great candidate, could be that candidate that I just recently pre-screened, and I think that they're a good match for one of your jobs or one of my own jobs that I want to look at more closely later. By internally submitting that candidate to the job, we have an opportunity to go back or, or you can go back and look at the candidate that I've submitted to you for further review. At that time, you may make the decision that you want to submit their resume or their CV to your client, which you can see is the third step. Did here two different ways. It really, again, just depends on what the labels are that you have. Probably the two most common that we see as part of our standard workflow is either it will say client submission or it will say CV sent. And this third step is when we're ready to send that resume or CV to our client for review. Once that's been done, once the client does review that resume or that, that CV, they look at it, they like what they see, and they decide that they want to interview our candidate, which you can see is the fourth step, the interview. I understand that an interview can take place over two or three interviews. They may be called back for those multiple interviews, which is perfectly fine. Uh, it can be documented multiple times, but you'll see we have this one standard workflow for the interview. The interviews go well and the client is interested in that candidate and they like us to extend an offer which is that next step. And once we extend the offer with the candidate and they accept, then what you work so hard to get to is that final step of the workflow, and that's the placement. So when we work through pre-screen all the way through placement, that's, that's what's taking place within a typical day. Those are often the steps that our recruiters, our consultants, account managers uh, are all working towards. And we want to ensure that we're documenting every step of the way. Now, let's bring this to life. I'm going to, uh, I'm actually gonna get out of these PowerPoint slides. We can come back to those later. And uh, I'm going to quickly log into Bullhorn. It looks like I had logged out, so let me make sure I get back into that. For our example this morning, I'm going to open up a candidate record. Let me use the find window. 
there's my candidate, Betty Bullhorn, will open up her record. And uh, just as a different view, we were just looking at that PowerPoint slide with the workflow icons. Well, this is what it looks like on a record in Bullhorn. These buttons that run across the screen, the, the screen when you're on the overview tab. For our conversation today, I'm going to stay on a candidate record, but I do want to mention that workflow icons on, are on all of the records in Bullhorn. So if I were to go to a job record, just as an example, I would see the same exact set of workflow icons minus the pre-screen because you only pre-screen a candidate. You'll also see as uh, as, uh, as I'm looking at these workflow icons for my candidate, Betty Bullhorn, that there's activity. I can see how many times a pre-screen has been documented, how many submissions have been documented, and so on. Now, when I'm working with my candidate, and uh, let's say I need to take another step in the workflow, I want to direct your attention to the submissions tab at the top of the screen. Let me go ahead and click on that. And it brings me here. Again, I'm able to see these various steps over on the left. I see the same information. Looks like she's been submitted nine times. Notice mine says submission instead of internal submission, but that's the step, internal submission, the client submission and the interviewing and so on. What I really want to direct your attention to is in the upper right-hand corner of this screen, you'll see two buttons. You see all, which I have highlighted right now, and also current. And, and it's important that you understand the difference between both. Right now, I'm in the view for all. And the best way that I can describe what that means is that this is like a summary. It really matches, if I go back to my overview tab, it matches these workflow icons. When, when I'm looking at these work, workflow icons, this is saying for this candidate, this is all of the activity that we've documented as part of the workflow for this individual. It's an overall summary. So when I go back to that submissions tab and I'm in that all view, essentially it's the same thing. Now I can expand any of these and it gives me the detail of those nine submissions, which I could take action from at this point. Let's collapse it, and instead let's focus on current. So I'm gonna click on that button in the upper right that says current, and, and it's going to make a few minor changes. The screen looks the same, but now if you're looking back here over on the left, you'll notice those totals have changed. Originally, there were nine submissions, but now there are six. And, and current view, which I think is, is a, a more user-friendly view, especially for an individual that you do have a lot of activity with, when I'm in the current view, it's exactly that. It's current. It's telling me in real time what's going on with this candidate. Again, I'm going to expand submissions. Remember when I came in here just a few seconds ago, I was able to see the detail of uh, what jobs we've submitted this candidate to. Let's take the first one as an example, that Java developer. Actually, yes, let, let's take that one. I'm going to highlight a couple of things on here for you. As I, as I see Java developer, I'm able to see what company it's for. I can see who my contact is that we're working with. I can see the, the date that this is transpired. Over on the far left, I can even see a status, which we're going to talk more about how do these statuses uh, get here anyways. But before we do that, I'm going to find the second one, actually the second one for the project manager. As you can see with the status, Betty has been submitted. That's that submission step. And Based on things that have transpired, we're ready to move Betty to the, the next step. When you click on the button on the far left, 
Once you select it, you'll notice in the upper right-hand corner, I now have a button to move. And when I click on that drop-down, that's what allows me to move to whatever that next step of the workflow is. Now, if I were to log a client submission, down at the bottom, I'm just going to go ahead and move to that next step without composing an email. Once that's done, let it update. Let me close the submissions. Remember, I'm in the current view, so notice that submission no longer says six. It's now five. Client submission that had been one before has now advanced to two. When I expand client submission, there it is. I physically moved that, that submission to the next step of the workflow. So that's why I think that it's easiest for an individual to work in this current view because, as I had mentioned, it gives it to me in that real time. I can see currently what's going on. All right, I wanted to make sure that that you understood how that works. Uh, so now let's go back to the overview tab just for a second and focusing on these workflow icons. I, I have at my company, I have a process that includes a second interview. And for my example, let's say that every time that we're going through the workflow, the process at my company is we must also show documentation of a second interview. And what's important to me is that, that I have it in this view, in this, in this workflow. So the way I envision it is that right where you see my cursor moving between interview and offer extended, I really want another step of the workflow and I want it to say second interview. It's important for me, it's important for everyone else on my team, including our leadership, that we see that as part of our standard workflow. That's what I want to be able to show you is, is how, can you, how can you add a custom workflow icon as part of your own workflow? Remember, this is an administrative functionality, so administrators have to, to be able to do this. And what I'm going to do is go into my menu. Since it's an admin function, I need to access the admin icon, which I have in the bottom left-hand corner. When I open up my, my admin entity, from there, I'm going to go into system settings. Now, when I'm in system settings, it can be very overwhelming when you look at this because a lot of it might not make sense. There's a lot of variables. In fact, for me, in my instance of Bullhorn, I have 14 different pages worth of variables. That's a lot, lot to sort through. The good news is that the majority of them, as an administrator, you don't need to worry about. But there are a few that you can use that I should say you want to use. You can use any of them. If I want to add a then the variable that I'm going to filter for is workflow. Notice when I filter workflow that the good news is it narrows down what my options are. And I want that new workflow icon, the one that will say second interview, I want it reflective on, I want it on the candidate record. So you'll notice that one of my variables it's actually the first one here it says candidate workflow steps. I'm gonna go ahead and expand that. I know there's a lot of information here. So let me, let me highlight what you see here and, and then how you can come back later and, and use it to your ability. The first thing I'll highlight is under the description, you'll notice there's a window with values. Now these values where it says, pre-screen, submission, interview, offer extended placement. I skipped over send out. That, that really is in reference to the client submission, sending out that resume. 
what I see here in the values, these are my current workflow icons. And if I do want to add a new one, it's going to be important that I insert it in the proper place of my workflow. As an example, second interview. If I were just to add it, you see here where my cursor is moving, if I put it right behind placement because I think, well, I'll just add it to the end of the list, that's where it would appear. And that wouldn't make sense, right? That's not where I want the second interview. I want the second interview, I want that workflow icon to fall right between here, between the interview and the one that says submission offer extended. And we'll do that in just a second. What you might also notice as you're looking at this, this value window is that some, some of these workflow steps, they're in brackets, others are not. Some say submission, others do not. That's where, if you look right below it, where it says hint, I won't read all of this to you, but I encourage you to come back and look at this because the hint is what's going to help me as I insert my new workflow icon. What the hint is going to help me understand is what will trigger that workflow icon to light up on the record. So just for a second, remember when I go back to Betty Bullhorn and, and I see three pre-screens, nine submissions and so on, what sort of documentation was done to trigger that workflow icon. Notice how I'm hovering over pre-screen and it says note, or if I hover over submissions and it says submissions, if I hover over, well, hovering over interviews is telling me interviews. I'll talk about that one more in a second. Let's go back to the system settings. The hint is what's going to help me understand how do I want to add that, that new workflow icon? What do I need to include so that it's going to be triggered correctly when I try to do the documentation? As one example, you see how pre-screen, it's not in any brackets. <clears throat> what that really means is that when it's not in brackets, then what will trigger that workflow icon <clears throat> is by adding a note. That's what will trigger it. When you think about interviews, interviews in Bullhorn are triggered when you add an appointment. So when I add my new workflow icon, the one that I'm gonna call second interview, I need to make sure that I set it up properly so that it will be triggered by an appointment. Now, when I read through the hint, <clears throat> again, I'm not going to read through all of that detail right now, but that's something that you would want to do to find what you're looking for. And I was, as I was just saying, appointment, <clears throat> let's come down here to the bottom. I'm actually going to use my cursor here. And I'm going to copy the appointment. So by me copying that, <clears throat> or highlighting it, you see next to it, it says this will highlight the workflow icon when an appointment with a specific type is created. So I'm gonna copy it because I wanna make sure that I insert this correctly. Now that I've got that copied, I'm going to come back up into the value box. I'm gonna insert it right in between that interview and submission where it says offer extended. Notice how everything is separated by a comma, no space, which is always how you want it. Don't, don't put a space, just that comma will separate it. I've insert my cursor where I want it and I'm going to paste in, oh, let me copy it one more time. Grab it. My cursor's being finicky on me. All right. So I think I've copied it properly. Let's go back up here and try that again and let me paste it in. There we go. So I know that I've got this set up properly for the right trigger. You see how it says appointment and then there's this blank line. Well, that blank line, we're going to replace it with what I want that new workflow icon to be called. And I want it to be called second 
interview. Now it's okay for me to put a space between the wording of the, the label between second interview, but just the workflow icons itself, I'm only separating by a comma. I've added it. I'm gonna quickly save my changes in the upper right hand corner. Now that I've got that saved, uh, let's actually close my system settings. I'm gonna click F5 on my uh, my keypad so that I can reload my login. This is doing a quick refresh for me. Let's go back to find our candidate, Betty Bullhorn. And I copied too much. I won't go back and change it right now, but it's just strictly me, my mouse was being sensitive. You see my new workflow icon that I have here. Well, I tell you what I didn't do is I didn't separate properly with the comma. I do need to go back and fix that. That's strictly user error of my mouse not, uh, not lined up properly. Let's quickly go back into the admin. I'll make a quick fix and then I'm gonna show you something else. We'll go back into the system settings. Remember, it's the workflow that I'm filtering for and specifically that candidate workflow step. Let's come back into the values. Do you see where I added the appointment second interview and I failed to have a comma to separate that between the submissions and offer extended. Just so that we make sure that we've got this set up properly, let's click save changes. I am going to reload or refresh one more time. I just wanna make sure you see this correctly. Go back to our candidate, Betty. It'll take just a second here to load. Actually, I may have clicked too soon. There we go. That comma, that's the importance of you seeing it separated. Now I've got that second interview. Now, when I hover over it, look what it tells me. It's going to be triggered by adding an appointment. That's how you create any new or additional workflow icons that you want. There's one more thing that I want to be able to share with you. Let's go back to the submissions tab just for a moment. And remember when we were talking about all of those steps of the workflow, they're reflective over here on the left. Again, I can see the submissions and the client submissions and so on. But the reality is as I'm working with this candidate, and we're taking the different steps in the workflow, we're not always going to have the same outcome. Maybe we, maybe we submitted the resume to the client. They looked at it and they weren't interested. They're going to reject that, that candidate for this particular job. Or maybe the interview took place and the, the candidate came to us and said after that interview, I'm not interested in that job anymore. Or the reverse, that everything has gone really well and we know that there is the offer extended workflow icon, although you don't see that here. What I want to be able to do is a little bit of behind the scenes documentation to show how are we progressing, not only through these steps of the workflow icon, but if we're going to stop it, if for any reason we're going to reject the candidate or the candidate has rejected the job and doesn't want to move any further. We need to include that here. It's not going to become a new workflow icon. It's not that, but, but I want to have some documentation here in submissions to be able to show if we've gone down a slightly different path with the individual. And here's how we're going to do it. I'm going to go back into my menu. I need to click back on that admin entity, again, back into my system settings. But this time I'm going to filter for job response status. That's the one I want, filter that. That also narrows down my list. And there's a couple of them here that I want to focus on. Do you see the first one that says confirmed job response status? Let's expand that. When I open it, I notice that there's nothing in the values. And I'm going to add something here. I'm going to, I'm going to add this. I'm gonna say client confirmed. Actually, 
no, I'm going to call it something different. Since we have a workflow icon that says offer extended, I'm going to put that. Let me include that, and then I'm going to save the changes. Now, once I've got that saved, let's collapse it, because while I'm in here, I'm going to also look at the last variable, the one that says rejected job response status. Let's ex expand that. Again, there's no value. And in this particular value, let's just, uh, I don't know, let's just say uh, client not interested. And then I'm going to save it. Now, let's go back to Betty. Actually, uh, let's go back to the overview tab for a second, and then I'll go back into the submissions. Uh, let's expand the submissions. Oh, why did that not take for me? Let me quickly go back <clears throat> to my job response status. I've got that. I'm going to expand my confirmed. I thought that I had saved it. I do have, ah, I know. I have to reload one more time. Sorry about that. Let me just resave it. Click F5 on my computer. We'll reload it. I was in a hurry to show it to you and didn't reload it. And so while it is reloading, I think this is an important thing to point out too for you administrators. When you're making these type of changes in Bullhorn, these administrative changes, it is often more than just a refresh. When I'm clicking on F5, I'm that's a shortcut of me instead of logging out and logging back in, but often these sort of large changes, those are significant. They are needing me to do just that, to log out. So I'm gonna click on the submissions tab again, and now look what you see. We have some additional steps here in the workflow. Now I can see rejected and confirmed. So if at any point I'm working with a submission and I'm just going to look at the QA engineer, that second one from the left, and then I want to move it, maybe something didn't work out and I'm going to reject this particular candidate, or let's be positive this morning, I want to confirm this individual. So I click confirmed, notice my status, that's what I had included in that value box to say offer extended, I can go ahead and move. Not only will that be updated here in my submissions, notice how it went from four, and now I've got that fifth one that's been moved here to the, the confirmed. So I wanted to make sure that you were able to see those few things today. I know I, uh, I shared a lot of information, but I do want to see, Sarah, if there are uh, any questions, if we have time even for a couple of questions. Yeah, definitely. We've got a couple questions here. I'll just read one or two since we're up against uh, the half hour here. But your okay. first question is, what if I also wanted to add offer accepted as a submission status to represent the candidate's confirmation of an offer? Good question. So that actually ties into what we were just talking about. Let's, one more time, we'll go back into the menu, we'll get over to our system settings. And if you recall where I just found that was in the job response status, let's filter that. I didn't mention this when we were in here earlier, uh, but the, the question that you were just asking, Sarah, is tied to this one, the confirmed job response status. I had included offer extended, but I want you to know in these values, whether it's this one, the confirm job, job response status, or even if I went back to the rejected job response status, you can put as many different values as you want. Just separate them by a comma, remember no space, and I have offer accepted, or I said, I have offer extended. I think you had said offer accepted. I, I don't think I'm gonna put that one. How about if I put this? I'll say candidate interested. You can put any value you want. So that way, I'll save those changes. When, when I 
take that step when I'm moving that candidate to the confirmed step of the workflow, what's happening is that I'll, I'll have a drop down where I initially was only able to see offer extended, I'll have all of these different values to choose from. Again, I can do the same thing with the rejected job response. Right now I have client not interested, but the truth is maybe it's the candidate that is not interested. So again, you can, you can add as many different values as you want based on what's appropriate for your business. Great question. Awesome. Thanks, Lana. Our last question for today is, could we include phone interview as a submission status slash appointment type to distinguish between face-to-face -face and phone interviews between candidates and clients? Another great question, yes. And um, what we'll do is we'll stay right here in the system settings. I'm going to make a quick change and let's filter under interview. It'll bring me here to this one, but luckily there's only one value for that. When I expand, and I see these values, it's the same thing here. So I, I do see interview scheduled, but the same concept, I put a comma. If I wanted phone interview as one of the values, or uh, sometimes I'll see Skype, you know what else I'll see? A second interview, I could add third interview, and so on. So yes, it works exactly the same. You add those values you want, make sure that you click save, and then you'll have those to choose from. Awesome. Thanks, Lana. So that's You're it welcome. for today's webinar. As a reminder, we will be sharing the webinar recording with all attendees within the next day or so. And then for any questions that we didn't have a chance to get to, we'll follow up via email. For additional training resources, don't forget to log into the Learning Hub through the customer community at help.bullhorn.com. Thank you, everyone. Enjoy the rest of your day.